Well, my next guest is a historian and award-winning author who has written extensively about Sir John A. Macdonald. His book, Clearing the Plains, looks at the history of Canada's original political leaders and their relationship with First Nations people. He even won a Sir John A. Macdonald prize for his non-fiction book. James Daschuk joins us now from Kingston, Ontario. James, good to have you with us. So you've been attending... Thanks. How are you doing? Great. You've been attending events honoring Sir John A. Macdonald all weekend long. How is he being commemorated in Kingston there on the 200th anniversary of his birth? Well, it's pretty interesting. I'm from Regina, so I'm sure it's not the news story it is here in Kingston. And uh, Salon Sir John A. 2015 has been doing a great job getting... Um, Actually, the detractors, the uh, possibly the critics of Sir John A. Macdonald, but also the people who uh, who really have a lot of faith in him and, and uh, hold him in very high esteem. So they've been doing a good job, uh, sort of walking the tightrope, doing the balancing act. It's uh, it's it's really interesting, though. There've been uh, events all week long. We're going to get to his critics in just a, in a moment, James. But first off, tell us a little more about Macdonald's more distinguished contributions as one of Canada's founding fathers. Well, I guess as uh, biographer Richard Gwynne said, he's uh, the man who made us. That was the title of his bi biography of MacDonald. And uh, in, in a lot of ways, uh, MacDonald did put a stamp on the country. He, you know, he broke the deal that built the country, built the CPR. And, uh, you know, in many ways, his legacy is still with us today. And as we both were alluding to, he's also a very controversial figure in some parts of the country, especially in Saskatchewan, where you're from. Yeah, well, on the on the prairies, I guess uh, one of the things is I was really struck here in, in uh, Kingston. I haven't spent, spent much time here before. Uh, there's a, a real legacy, like there's a historical plaque on every corner about uh, Macdonald and the Fathers of Confederation. And, and in a lot of ways, Kingston is the place where the idea of Canada was born and, uh, you know, where it came into fruition. Uh, but my community in Regina is uh, where a lot of things ended up. That's the place where Louis Riel was hanged. Uh, that's the place where uh, Indigenous people were displaced uh, from their traditional lands and forced onto reserves. So uh, it's almost like the two poles of, uh, of Confederation, you know, the idea and, uh, and, and, like I said, how things ended up. Yeah, and there you are, kind of the go-between <laughs> on both sides. James, do you think McDonald's shortcomings in dealing with Aboriginal peoples, and there were a number of them, were they a reflection of his personal character, or do you think the era in which he lived? You know, I, I, I'm not really into uh, psychological history, so I haven't really uh, thought where I, you know, I haven't I don't really focus on his uh, on his motivations, uh, what I've seen, and I actually came at this from the perspective of population health and the history of the health of Indigenous people, I was interested in, like I said, the outcomes. And uh, McDonald's uh, primary objective on his return to power in 1878, and it's probably his greatest legacy, was the construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway. That being, you know, and that was a great legacy. That was, you know, the biggest mega project probably in Canadian history. Uh, the other side of that, and uh, very closely attached to that, when McDonald came to power, he was the Minister of Indian Affairs for 10 years and basically set up the paradigm in which Indian Affairs functioned for generations after even his death. And so uh, over, under his supervision, First Nations people were subjugated, were forced onto reserve, were uh, actually incarcerated on their reserve because there was a past system imposed from 1885 to 1951. So... Uh, what made, what made him uh, a great man is also uh, the, the counter side of that is uh, one of the reasons why he's, uh, I don't know if he's reviled, but he's almost considered to be a villain among First Nations and Métis people because he's the, uh, the agent of their, um, of their marginalization. Mm -hmm. And residential schools uh, at inception as well. So, James, what do you think, 200 years after Sir John A. Macdonald's birth, do you think it's possible for us to reconcile the opposing elements of his character? Well, I've got a colleague that once told me that once you know something, you can't unknow it. So what I've been trying to do, and uh, there's been actually, uh, we had an event last night and there was some very uh, frank discussion. It was, it was really interesting to see the different perspectives. But once people hear kind of both sides of the story, I guess they can judge for themselves. And uh, I think um, actually the discussions that have taken place here with, with Salon and Sir Johnny 2015 have gone a long way to at least opening up the dialogue. And some, sometimes it's been pretty heated dialogue. But uh, when people get to hear, you know, get to hear the full story, I think a lot of minds are being changed this week. Yeah, interesting. How do you think they're being changed? In what way, James? Well, uh, 
I teach a lot of First Nation students, and uh, and uh, I guess the events of my book are not news to them. That's part of their family lore. But a lot of uh, mainstream Canadians, uh, it's it, it's actually news to them, and we don't know how how terribly uh, the Canadian government treated First Nations people. They essentially withheld food until they took up their reserves and took on treaty. So they managed a famine over several years. Uh, that prolonged malnutrition undermined their immune status and uh, tuberculosis broke out. And under Macdonald's supervision as Minister of Indian Affairs, uh, the health of Indigenous people in, in Saskatchewan and Alberta declined to such an extent that their, their population bottomed out within a couple of years of him. Uh, he was still Prime Minister, but he had left the, the Indian portfolio just a couple of years earlier. Well, he certainly has a varied legacy. James, thank you very much for taking the time to share your insight and your research with us. We appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Christine. Take care. You too. That's James Daschuk, historian and author of Clearing the Plains, joining me from Kingston, Ontario.